video. Hello, I thought we were live, and uh, welcome to the next River Horse live stream. So we are at the end of June, and uh, the big exciting news is that uh, Pacific Rim is getting on the ship. It's being board, put it on board, it's being put on board, and is getting, um, you know, we'll, we'll start traveling and we'll arrive, uh, hopefully, you know, without any uh, kaiju attacks uh, in the middle of the sea. Uh, the ships will make their way to, to the US and then to, to Europe. And uh, we'll soon, you know, we'll be able to ship the Kickstarter one, send them for distribution, and get it all started. It's been uh, a long time coming, and it's very, very exciting. We have received the samples, and the plan will be for me to open them and uh, show you some of the contents inside, and do a little bit of a quick "oh, look what's in the box" kind of thing. But before we do that, let's go quickly through the the newsletter that we just sent out and see what's happening in general in the Riveros world. So I have here the reminder of the newsletter. So we have, of course, the first thing in the, in the newsletter is the is the Pacific Rim announcement. You can now pre-order uh, the, the products, the Wave 1. Wave 1 consists of the starter set and the four uh, Kaiju expansions. Sorry, two Kaiju expansions and two Jaeger expansions. So two good guys, two bad guys. We'll let you decide who are the good guys and what are the bad guys. And the, um, the idea is that now you can pre-order them when the ship arrives after we first we ship all the Kickstarters out and after the Kickstarters are out then we'll start to send the pre-orders out and uh, it goes into stores so if, you know if you don't want to order it online and save on postage I'll definitely encourage you to go to the to your local friendly gaming store and uh, get them to order it for you so Pacific Rim pre-order is the first element then we switch to the Dimensions Labyrinth adventure game the role-play game that we made about you know, uh, Labyrinth and uh, we focus on some of the people that have contributed to the to the writing uh, one of which is uh, Jack Caesar which is our in-house game designer here that uh, has written the rule system for, for, the, for the Labyrinth RPG and uh, there's a little bit about him and about uh, some of his uh, uh, thoughts on designing the rules for, uh, for the RPG so if you uh, click on, on that, you'll, you get to the place on our website where you can read that, what, uh, what it thinks about the, the rules and designing them. Uh, after that, we get to the creature feature, uh, where we feature some of the My Little Pony, Tales of Equestria uh, creatures and characters that appeared in our books. Um, and not only the ones that are already appeared in our books, we also plan to create new creatures to, so that you can you know, enrich your role play game your, your play adventures and actually people have started contributing uh, their own creatures as well because there's a template and you can make your own creature which is uh, uh, a fun thing that quite a few uh, we had a, quite a, a couple of suggestions here that uh, and actually some finished artwork and some finished uh, um, creature that we with the creature feature I mean that's an essay creature um, and we're gonna post them very soon uh, which is very fun. It's very fun to see people's, uh, you know, the things they, they made up uh, actually becoming, you know, part of the part of the role play game. Which is, you know, it, I find it very nice, and also some of them are very young people that created this thing, so it, it's very cute and it's very heartwarming to see that come to life. Uh, after creature feature, does the <laughs> the comic <laughs> drawn by Chris Caesar, and uh, I think. I have to say, I think this week's comic is, for me, in my opinion, the funniest to date. Uh, it really cracks me up. I think the the, the myself and the, and, the, and the hippo drifting, controlling a Jaeger, and the fact that I can't quite, and he says, just try to think like a hippo. I just, <laughs> I find it hilarious. <laughs> have a look. See if you like it. And after that, we have the uh, content about River Horse product made up by third party, by other people. And in this particular one, we are showing a segment from a on tabletop uh, interview that uh, Jim put, uh, that, <laughs> that Sam put, did we not Jim put, Sam put, Sam put made uh, with, uh, with us and uh, is, um, is basically uh, asking us about quite several different products. There's some Pacific Rim there, there's some Hunger Games there, but more importantly is uh, is asking about the Labyrinth RPG and he's uh, surprised there. I kind of play a little trick on him by <laughs> showing him the as an example of uh, one of the one of the 
scenes in the, in the RPG. I used one of the, the one he's written, because he's one of the guest authors as well. So I completely out of the blue, I'll show him his bit, and he's kind of like, <coughs> <laughs> that is me, it's my thing. It's quite funny. Uh, so after that bit, which is a great little interview, then there's the announcement about this segment that you're about to watch, uh, or you can watch the, the older ones about other products if you're interested in Hunger Games. There's a one where we unbox the Hunger Games, and so on. And that leads you to the last section of the of the of the newsletter, which is all the pre-orders that we have up. And actually, <laughs> starting with the Pacific Rim stuff now, they've gone up in number quite considerably. I mean, you can pre-order the Hunger Games, which is going on the boat right now. August and Oubliette, the new supplement for Fratelli of Equestria, which is also being stepping, manufactured. Uh, the, of course, the Labyrinth RPG, and now all of the Pacific Rim range, but Wave 1, is, is available for pre-order. So, get stuck in. Right, and now that we've gone through all the bits of the newsletter, we can uh, proceed to the exciting bit of um, unboxing. No, showing you at least some of the components. This is not a proper unboxing is not the official unboxing is just us getting really excited and going oh, i just received this quite a few samples and this will be sent to reviewers and the people that you know have contributed to the project when we did the kickstarter and uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll get them to have some real goodies to to to, to show off and see what they really think of uh let's begin so i have let's begin with the starter set Oops, makes sense i have here the box we have removed the, the shrink wrap check it of it before showing to you but it's all good it's great so we have the box with lots of cool artwork and a lot of stuff in here it's not a light box it's not a small box uh, there's a window showing the molds inside so clearly they are exciting so i'll proceed without much further ado to open it and where do i put it i'll put it i put it down here let's begin with the models so let's begin, for example, with Gypsy Avenger, which is on um, Pacific Rim, the second film, not in the first one, but is was it reminiscent of the Gypsy Danger from the first film. And here it is. I wonder whether the camera is focusing properly. Yeah, yeah. I have a I see a thumbs up there. Yeah, so it is it is in. So I'll do a little bit of a spin shoot there. Uh, but you can see he's firing his gravity sling. And based on his hex, which has information on the base here, I probably can't see it obviously with the amount of focus we can do, but next to him, in fact I see if I can put both on the in the in the shot. You guys let me know if they're both in the shot, but we have Shrikethorn. Can we see Shrikethorn? Is he in the shot? Yep. Yeah, cool. Uh, so basically one of the kaijus that uh, category four that uh, fights the Jaegers in, in the second film and uh, Again, I'll rotate Shrikethorn a bit. So his claw, his spines, which he fires around. Yep, that is Shrikethorn, one of the kaijus. Like all things with this game, I always feel like making big sounds of giant stompy robots or screaming, roaring monsters and stuff. I'll uh, see if I can resist this now and don't do too many roar <coughs> sounds. Um, just did one. Okay, so the model is obviously the centerpiece in the game, but in the box. What's next? Well, I think the next thing you see is a bag which has 16 combat dice, the blue ones, the blue dice, and one black activation die or dice. So basically, the blue ones are used for attack and defense during the game. They're rolled, they have special symbols on them, of course misses and other symbols that mean either hits, the critical hits, special results and then there's the black dice which is the activation which is i mean if you're familiar with terminator this is a bit like our our fate dice in terminator not not the same but the same concept of this tells you how many how many how many models on your side activate at the same time in each pulse during the turn so that's the one and now I lift the tray, the plastic tray, and get stuck into the rest of the stuff in there. Oh, where to begin? I suppose we've seen the models. I'll go next to the uh, compound 
of the Jäger and of the Kaiju, so you have the control display if you want of your Gypsy Avenger. I don't know again if it fits in the. Does it fit? Yeah. There? Yeah. So you will have counters to indicate uh, the, the charge and the ammunition that he's carrying. His stats are over there, and you will have be able to put his his uh, modifications upgrades here. There's a card upgrade card that goes here. While here you put the pilot cards, the the two pilots which are drifting and piloting the the, the, the Jaeger. So uh, I will now show you instead a Kaiju control sheet, and that's. What it looks like so you have the stats you have again the rage and the kaiju blue which is effectively its ammunition so to speak and here the aggressive mutation and the defensive mutation so obviously that allows you to customize the the, the monsters as, uh, as you prefer and therefore that's what a kaiju control sheet looks like and okay cars there's a lot of stuff in here uh well uh, maybe before before i go into the cars Actually, let's go to the cards because you can see them in just next to the to the control panel. So, there's a first bag which has the mutation and upgrade cards. So these are go these go into those slots that I've shown you. Uh, for example, if I go to Kaiju, you know they will sit there and tell you what you have, how you modify. You have to so Kaiju strength, keen eyes, and so on and so forth. Fate strike and so on. While for the Jaeger, or the Jaegers, reinforced compod, protecting your pilots a bit more. So you choose these, and these are actually interchangeable between different uh, different uh, Jaegers. Some of them are specific, or some of them are generic. So that allows you to, you know, the more your collection expands, the more you can add uh, modifications to your to your Jaegers. The other thing that, of course, Jaegers do have, as I mentioned, pilots. So you would have two pilots, and you would place them on the on the sheet here as they are drifting uh, like in this case we have no 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 other than Jake Pentecost and Wun Yu Yen sorry you we are sorry about my pronunciation there and uh, they have special abilities and they have a level of drifting drifting compatibility which is based on how many of these connections actually connect properly in there so in this case for example Jake Pentecost and uh, Wun Yu Yen don't connect very well don't drift very well together. They're not drift compatible, basically. Uh, you will have to find different combinations uh, of pilots. Um, okay, what more is in here? More cards. Oh yes, lots of cards. Well, going with the with the models, of course, you have the action cards here. So six for Triform and six for Gypsy Avenger. So these are your actions that you'll be doing the turn as well as the damage that you suffer. So when you hold them, you can see the options you have. Fury Slam, Death Grip, Tails Wipe, Rage, Fire Tail Spikes, Natural Reflexes. So these are all obviously to be read in a very uh, roaring voice. That, that's kind of the point. Uh, when you use them, you have the instruction here what they do. When you take damage, the enemy removes them from your hand and places them there. So you take damage next to your compod and the damage tells you what happens to your, to your mech. Like so if uh, i can illustrate that <laughs> but yes a little bit of time but i will uh, go into more detail i'm sure in a proper not not this unboxing um okay so we have seen the oh well, the jaeger uh, so gypsy avenger has tactical action chainsaw the gravity sling fire plasma cannon power surge and deep drift um other cards in here that's quite some more cards so we have here the scenario cards, the mission cards. So your missions, bombardment, destruction, headhunter, survival, hunting ground, broken will. Russell Groves asks, when will this be available to buy from the website? Uh, the well, Pacific Ring. I believe so. Pacific Ring can be pre-ordered now. As I said at the start of the thing, you can pre-order it now, you can buy it. And uh, the, the ships are starting, are leaving China now, so give it a month, month and a bit. This will be in our warehouses, and therefore, the first thing we'll do will fulfill the Kickstarters. So be sent to the people that voted on Kickstarter first. And just after that, and it will take a few days, after that we'll start to fulfill all the pre-orders. So if you pre-order it now, you will get it just after the Kickstarter people. And 
Pre-order now makes sure that you will get it because hopefully this will run out of stock quickly. Hopefully. <laughs> In which case, obviously, you may miss it uh, until we reprint. Um, it will also, after the pre-orders are sent out, then of course will, is also sent to uh, distribution and stores, and so it will, it will get into stores. So again, you can choose to uh, buy from a store, which obviously is cheaper in terms of shipping. The little risk is that you may not uh, obviously get it, but hopefully you know, there will be enough in the market for, for you. So your choice, but you can buy it now. Continuing, what else do we get in there? We get... Scenarios. So this is like deployment, all things, and uh, also quick quick start cards that show you the simple scenarios that I'm mixing them up. <laughs> quick start cards, simple missions, and more sophisticated scenarios here. Council the Apocalypse sounds like a great scenario. Going going from Council the Apocalypse to skirmish, um, and all sorts of different scenarios there. Okay, those are the cards. After the cards. What you get is the, the rules. Now, I have no idea if this fits in the camera, does it? Not really. Not really. You got some nice art. Not really, yeah. There's nice art, there's nice pictures of uh, uh, giant robots hitting monsters, and uh, there's a nice, nice view of, uh, of uh, Birth. Was it? Is, well, well, well. Obsidian Fury. Obsidian Fury, thank you. I was going to say. Obsidian Fury is there, and uh, who what else? There was that big page with the double. Ah, yes, I like this double spread. Triton versus Gypsy Avenger. Probably can't see it at all. Well, <laughs> we'll share it later. But yeah, so the rules here, uh, including you know advanced rules and optional things and scenarios. So it's all there. And the next thing we find in here, let's try not to do any damage as I bring it up. It is the playmat. On one side, it features a flat city has <laughs> suffered a lot of damage so roads uh, a few canals muddy canals and a lot of ruins some vehicles the opposite side uh, I will try to show it without opening everything here but the opposite side is the bottom of the sea which on one side of the map includes the bridge so you can see the bridge just about off the edge of the map the idea is that of course in a in a um, on a city the Jaegers are defending and the Kanjus are, are attacking while obviously where, where, you're fight, where you're fighting at the bottom of the sea the Kanjus will be defending the bridge and the Jaegers will be trying to drop a nuke into the bridge so that's the, the typical mission that you have underwater so after the playmat which is three by two feet there is not one not two <laughs> but seven and again I'm not sure whether you can see them but there's seven <laughs> seven punch boards in there so there's quite a lot of weight of punching stuff out of there i mean the main thing i suppose is the hex gauge here which allows you to measure distances and move units around basically because you can slot your your base in there and do the stompy stompy move around and the clicky clicky rotating pivoting in place so it's a template to move your hex based monster as if it was on a hex grid even though there is no hex grid you can play on you know, on a table on a surface on a diorama on our playmat so what else do you have you have counters to use on your uh, on your um, data sheets you have terrain so some military installations some civilian installations which on the other side have different you know lakes and uh, other type of terrain the same next one has hexes again these are buildings, so skyscrapers and military buildings on one side, and underwater features, pinnacles of rock and stuff like that, underwater. Uh, what else? Oh, yes, this is the 3D buildings. So from these, you punch them out and you assemble them. So from these, we have some pre-assembled. <laughs> we assembled them right now to show you off, show them off to you. So that would be one of them. I'll rotate him a bit. This is assembled from those punch out things and another one. Another one of our skyscrapers. So you can have a little 3D. Basically, you stick this on top of your 2D of the hexes to give them depth and sort of give them a, a presence. Can I put a monster next to it? I can put a monster next to them. That's a good idea. Why don't I? So the idea is building, 
building. I create a little diorama here. I don't know how much you can see, but then monster walks in. Grr, arg, grr, arg. Bad building. Building gone. <laughs> and just then, like the movie. <laughs> just like the movie. Same level of special effects. You go, ah, I will save the city. Yes, only on reverse you can see such amazing special effects and sound effects. Zap, zap. Okay, uh, more buildings. Yeah, there's those different types, different forms. There's quite a few of them. You can assemble them. Okay, I will now clear the close camera and show you the rest. Da, da, da. Oops. Yep, yeah, more building, more skyscraper. Skyscrapers to build. Helipad on top of skyscraper. More skyscrapers to build. <laughs> Another punch board. And what's next? More skyscrapers to build. And of course, as well as skyscrapers, you get tokens, and we, we squeezed in all the all the tokens and counters we could. This is the uh, this is the turn track, isn't it? This is the turn track for the game. Again, I'm not sure how much you can see from the from the close cam, but yeah, let's keep track of the turn. And so all of this bonanza is in this box, a very heavy box, uh, but with a lot of uh, fun and game in it. And uh, of course, what we would help you guys to do is to love the game and the models and then um, get into the, the hobby. And there's a quite a lot of choice of other types of monsters and, and Jaegers and robots that you can collect. I'll show you a few in a second. I'm just putting everything back into the into the game. So cards, mutations, action cards, upgrade cards, pilots, rules, tray, <laughs> dice, and models. So all in the <laughs> square peg, round hole. Uh, okay. So that was the starter set. You agree there's quite a lot of stuff in there. Let me just go with the game. Now, uh, wave one of the of Pacific Dream has, as well as the starter set, two more models per side. So if we go into the, so to speak, good guys, the uh, Pan Pacific Defense Force, the next model I would choose to show you, uh, Saber Athena, uh, which is probably my favorite Jaeger. So it comes out of the box. And the first thing you find in there is well, the Pampasivi Defense Corps, the control pad of Sabertina, so pilot, mutation, <laughs> not mutation, <laughs> upgrade, the stats and the uh, and the ammunition and energy uh, bars. And then I am removing the plastic insert. And in there there's a lid that opens like so. And out of it come the cards. So in, in each oh, expansion you have the action cards for Saber Athena. You have, uh, well, actually why don't I open them for you and show you each component Ta -da -ta -da, if I can. <laughs> These are quite tightly sealed. Ah, I found the opening. Yeah, I'm in. Right. So you have the Saber Athena activation action cards. Power Surge, Deep Drift, Flying Knee, Lightning Speed, Twin Plasma Swords and the N16 Particle Charger. Uh, she's the fastest in the fleet. More pilots. In this particular case, you have Latasha Love, Ryuichi Hatayama, and Renata Gutierrez. Three young pilots there. And some of the upgrade cards Pinpoint Accuracy, Regenerative Kinetics, and Nimble, which is a specific. These two are Saber Athena only. This one is generic. Your left hand is in front of the camera. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'll uh, try to grab them the other way. <laughs> See, upgrade cards. I'll then show pilot cards again. Pilot cards. <laughs> and, of course, the action cards. Right, uh, what else is in there? Oh, yes, there's the little, the smallest punch board in, in human, humanity history, which is the, the two counters you use on the, to, to keep track of your ammunition and, uh, and energy, or Kaiju Blue and, uh, and Rage. And uh, finally, last but not least, let me extract the model from it without breaking it, because they're quite secure in there, yeah, uh, okay, so it comes out, and there you go, Saber Athena, so I'll put it there, and give time to the camera to, yeah, I'll rotate her a bit, rotate, rotate, rotate. Thank you. 
Say to Athena, that for you. And what else? That is the Sigurdina. Uh, should I tag it up? Ooh. Well, I think I will proceed to show you just the models to speed things up here because otherwise it will take forever. But I'll show you the models that are in there. So Sigurd Athena on the good side and on the human side. On the Kaiju side we have Hakuja. Hakuja. Here. Rar. <laughs> so he's the also category four. Kaiju from the second movie. There it is. Category four. Burrowing. Underground. Then in no particular order, I'll show you Gypsy Danger. Gypsy Danger from movie one. So this is the first Jaeger from the first movie. Because obviously we're gonna slowly make up all of the range from all the, the ones you see in the in both movies. But yeah, the good old favorite Gypsy Danger, main character, main uh, Jaeger of film one. Is my hand not in the way yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, did. good. Yeah, okay. And ooh, what next? Ooh, Obsidian Fury. Sorry, Obsidian Fury. I forgot your name. <laughs> Earlier on, Obsidian Fury. People sometimes go, why? Why is this Jaeger in the in the Kaiju expansions? Well, uh, with a spoiler, I would say watch the movie if you don't know the answer to that. Getting out of the plastic without breaking anything. There, there you go. A very nasty Obsidian Fury, and he's black. He's made of obsidian. No, he's as black as obsidian. Apart from his glowy sword, clean chain sword. A very powerful kaiju. Jaeger, kaiju. <coughs> Watch the film. <laughs> okay. And that's it. There is this wave one. Uh, of course, there's, we're working now on wave two and uh, wave three. It will take you know some time, but uh, hard work on those. And uh, I don't know where to put all this stuff. I mean, if you have um, if you have taken part in the Kickstarter, there will be uh, extra bits and bobs, different colored dice, and uh, this unique model. Uh, Richard McPherson asks, uh, do they all come pre-painted or can you paint over them? Yeah, yes. <laughs> yes, they do come pre-painted, of course, and you can paint over them, of course. Uh, people do. Uh, some people do, some people don't. I, I wouldn't because I'm lazy and I like to get playing straight away, uh, but uh, I'm sure that a lot of people that are into painting miniatures can use these as a base and work on it and add detail, and, uh, uh, but they certainly are good enough to play as they are. I, I would. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm not a great painter, and uh, I certainly enjoy the playing side of uh, miniature games more than the painting side. So uh, I wouldn't, but yes, of course you could. Uh, as I was saying, this is a alternative version of Gypsy Avenger, which we, uh, which we, which is exclusive to uh, Kickstarter. It's basically a promotional model. Uh, I'm sure we'll we'll make it promotional and available through. Uh, Organized play, gaming events, and stuff. So you can win it, but you cannot buy it. Basically, this model cannot be bought from us. <laughs> uh, we also have a little scrapper model, uh, which is going to be again added to the to the Kickstarter uh, offers, to the Kickstarter uh, pledges when, when they go out. Which is a smaller metal, unpainted, uh, again a little a little something for for Kickstarter uh, follow follow. Right, and that's all of the stuff I have to show you today. I hope you're as excited about this stuff as I am. I mean, I'm covered in boxes here and models and <laughs> shininess. So we're, we're keen to get playing now. Any more questions? Any more questions? Uh, otherwise, I'll um, sign out. <laughs>